Do you know who I haven't played in a while? Tainted Lilith. So I decided, f*** it. Let's play some Tainted Lilith today. I'm- that, that's the whole reasoning behind it, man. I actually really like Tainted Lilith and- Oh my god, I think BFFs is gonna be incredible because I'm pretty sure your Gello uh, counts as a familiar. So I need that. I need that BFFs. Oh god, yeah, that's annoying. What the hell, man? What was I supposed to do, dude? There was no dodge in that. Anyway, hope you're having a good day. Hope you're holding up all right. Everything's going all right. Everything's going fine. You're having a good time. You're, you're enjoying life and everything is treating you well. Because, uh, yeah, that's what's important in life, right? That's a great way to skip that room. <laughs> Yo, there's some money. Huge, huge. Good start. Good start. As you can tell, I'm still a little sick. Although feeling a, a quite a bit better already. Didn't get to work out today just yet, but we're getting there slowly but surely. Slowly but surely. No keys yet either. That's uh, that's quite weird. I mean, there's worse outcomes, but right now my main goal is to blow up and act like I don't know nobody. Uh, love that video, by the way. Keep referencing it like once every couple of weeks, but it is very funny. Uh, but also, my main goal is to get that BFS. I need it. I don't even know if it actually works with Gello. As far as I'm aware, he counts as a familiar. The little Gello that even inherently Tainted Lilith has is a familiar, and you have got to be kidding me, dude. Really? What's up with the donation machine, man? Why is it not paying out with anything? Okay, at least I got a key. Right, that's something. I guess I gotta find my other secret room. Wait, there was a pill? Oh yeah, there was a pill because PhD drops pills, right? I completely forgot. Tears up, huge. Could blow up that pot, the likelihood of it paying out with three cents is pretty darn low. These pots, on the other hand, I'll keep in mind. Why would I just walk? I'm so impatient. <laughs> if I don't find my super secret room on my first try, which there's only really a couple of plausible locations. Oh, that's the tough one though, isn't it? I think it's here. I hope it's here. Fuck. Okay, plan B, blow up those pots. It's like four pots with one bomb. Surely, that's enough to, you know, get you some money, right? Fuck. No, no, don't do this to me. No, not again. Wait, 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 actually, no, it's totally fine. Watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this, it's all good. I am doing the, um, the turnaround for this preemptively because there's gonna be money. The one time. The one time I actually need there to be money in this room. Like, 75% of the time you walk into this room and there's two coins just lying on the floor. Why not today? Why not today? Why can't today be the day where that also happens? Secret room's probably fucking right up here, man. Oh, man. I need two cents and I don't know how I'm getting them. The funniest part is... If one of these pays out with... Wait, you think- I Actually, wait, this is possible. Watch this, watch this. This is totally possible. If I nudge it just right... If I nudge it just right, I think I can totally, like, get it to be stuck right on the bottom right corner, and then I can grab it. This happens sometimes, where, like, you know, when you have, like, a golden poop that's behind these unbreakable rocks, you can kind of glitch some of the money out, and... <sighs> you can't give me flight. I'll grab this. I'm getting desperate now. I'm getting, I'm getting this desperate. I will break every singular rock on this floor for something like this to show up. Okay, I mean, that's decent. It's not really what I need, but it's useful in other ways. I appreciate it, right? Like, either way. Oh. Well. The thing now is, like, how am I gonna get the health to facilitate Swallow Penny payouts? That's, that's the problem, right? Like, they're guaranteed payouts, I think, but you can always try to bank on some lucky Swallow Penny payouts, but I'm still gonna end up being... Three cents short. It's never been more over, bros. It's never been more over. It's... Fuck, man. The messed up thing is, I wouldn't have gotten that swallow penny without buying the bracelet. However, had I not bought the bracelet and found the swallow penny, I would have had enough money to get BFS. This is infuriating. If I had just blown up the right pot, Instead of the four pots, uh, foolish me, right, trying to make best use of my bomb. I should've just blown up the single pot in the next room over. And, uh, gotten myself the ability to, uh, get Swallow Penny and thus maybe get enough money and not have to worry about it. Oh well. Fine, fine, I've spent eight and a half minutes on this floor, coping, trying, I'll give up, I'll give up. Wait a minute. No, there's two of clubs. Hold on. <laughs> Hold on! No, you see, I have ideas. 
I have plans. I can't tell you about them right now because the haters will stop me, but fuck, okay, it's over. At least these pills are gonna be good, yeah. Wow. What a trash item room. Ah, last fly is fine, actually. <coughs> last fly is actually kind of okay. Whatever, let's fight the boss, aka use the soul of Azazel. Ah, it's Wormwood. Die. Okay, he died. It's good. We're, we're all fine. I got HP back. We are saved. Okay, now, obviously I'm going to angel deals. Now, uh, what's the plan? Hmm. You see, that is a good question. I don't know the answer to it either. Should I look for crawl spaces with this? Yeah, am I gonna be diligent enough to actually do that? Highly unlikely. Oh, I've got keys, I've got a bit of money. I should try to get that more options before I go my item room. That would be very smart. Surely I'll be able to scrounge together the money for that one, right? Right? Aw oh, man, Lost Fly is so goaded, bro. I love Lost Fly. He's so good. Okay, don't go to the item room yet. You need to see if you can get more options from the shop. That would be amazing. So ignore that for now. Ah, don't walk on those spikes. Yikes. This guy's getting torn to shreds. There you go. Some damage never hurt nobody. Although I think range doesn't matter at all. Because no matter what, Gello will always be at the same range away from you. Let's see what we got in here, right? Whoa. I mean, I don't think I want almond milk with Lilith. It's one of the few times the item is actually not great. I'll just take the damage, man. I'm pretty sure the Gello Yeetus does like a lot of extra, like has a multiplier on it in terms of the damage, and it scales with your damage. So, smart idea to just grab raw damage. Like, every damage up you get as Lilith is actually basically multiplied. I don't know how much fold, like threefold or something, if you're just yeeting, which is what you tend to do a lot. So, yeah. <coughs> Fuck it, I'm opening these. Okay, my angel deal. Why, thank you. More stats. Look at that. Look at that lost fly just doing absolutely wonderful work. Mm, mm, mm. Wait, no, don't aggro on me. Go back to aggro on the fly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Keep doing that. Oh boy, never should have opened the other ones. Uh, let's check this room as well. I got keys for days. A four room. Well, well, that's interesting indeed, actually. Thank God I haven't seen any item pedestals yet because otherwise I would have been mad about finding this last. Anyway, you know what's crazy? The fact that I kind of got like ripped off. Uh, by the hotel I stayed at in London over the- over my trip last week. Like, that was- that was actually fucking wild. Because when we booked it, it was a cheap hotel, but we weren't expecting much. We just wanted a place to crash for a few nights, and that's it, right? It said, free Wi-Fi included. And you would expect a hotel to just have free Wi-Fi, right? I'm just gonna take the Steam sale here, by the way. Um, so we didn't think much of it. Little did we know that the free Wi-Fi in question, or the extent of the free Wi-Fi in question, meant 30 minutes of free Wi-Fi. After that, you're paying three bucks a day just to have Wi-Fi access for two devices, not for the whole room or anything like that. You do it on a per-device basis. So, we basically got ripped off to have access to the world's shittiest Wi-Fi by paying three bucks a day. Now, why was it shitty? Well, once you connected to the Wi-Fi, it was actually perfectly fine. Again, I don't think I even had to because thanks to EU roaming still being a thing in the UK, I could have just used my mobile data. And I have a 12 gigabyte contract, so it would have been totally fine. Like, I wouldn't have even had to sweat it that much in terms of data usage. Like, I wasn't using the internet that much anyway. But, you know, that's besides the point. I it just didn't feel right to use my mobile data and roaming uh, for, like, watching YouTube videos when I could just, like, use the hotel Wi-Fi instead. The craziest part about the Wi-Fi, though, and why it pissed me off so much, I should have left that around to re-roll, oh well, why it pissed me off so much was connecting to the Wi-Fi. And, like, because it's a hotel Wi-Fi, you have to, like, do the signing in thing, right? The signing in part did not work on two of the three days that we stayed there. At least it didn't work if you were in your room. You had to go all the way back down the hallway, which was like, this was a pretty massive hotel, all the way back down the hallway, take the elevator all the way back down to the ground floor, right next to the fucking reception, to the lobby. Log into the Wi-Fi there, it worked flawlessly, you could connect and then go back up. So I was standing there like a fucking dweeb in the elevator room with my laptop on one hand like a fucking hacker, man trying to just log into the damn Wi-Fi so I could watch a fucking YouTube video in my hotel room. I don't know how they have such a dog shit Wi-Fi situation there, but god damn it was bad. 
It was atrocious. The entire hotel was dog shit as well. It, it felt like it was falling apart at the seams. The bathroom was making funny noises every time anybody flushed the toilet. Uh, there was obviously no air conditioning, but I don't really fault them for that. It's the UK at the end of the day. All we had was like a shabby fan that was like basically falling apart. If you position it in the wrong way, the fan blades were just like crashing against, you know, the, the little cage it has around it. Uh, and that's all we had blowing across us when we were trying to sleep. And, but it was only on one side, so I was getting the brunt force of it, which probably didn't help in me getting a cold, to be fair. Like, as much as it was hot, you know, if you're like constantly for like an entire night lying in the the exact <coughs> wind tunnel stream essentially right of a of a fan blowing air i'm pretty sure that doesn't help like my mom always says that's how you get a cold i never really believed her but also she might be onto something yeah Virgo is all right i mean i already have phd now i think about it so it wouldn't have been that great that being said nothing else in that room was exciting either so i'm look same reason there's almond milk as to why it's probably not that good. I, I Maybe it has a hard code of synergy. A planetarium? What the hell? Okay, sure. Mars? That's unfortunate. I was expecting a little bit more, but uh, hey. Maybe I should have waited if there's another reroll on this floor. Uh, so yeah, that hotel was fucking dog water. But at the very least, it was cheap, right? At the very least, it was kind of cheap, I guess. Breakfast wasn't included either, of course, but at least finding a place to eat in London isn't that tough. Uh, it's just all very expensive. It's, it's pricey, alright. But that's kind of like the whole city. What do we have in the angel deal? Oh, an immaculate heart for my troubles. Oh, a school bag as well. Well, well, well. Like, in comparison to that, the Birmingham Hotel, which is also a cheap hotel, but it was at the airport and stuff, which is, you know, already a big upside, was, like, night and day. It, it was such, such a better hotel. It was incredible in comparison. They actually had air conditioning. You know what? Fuck it, I'll use magic skin. Ah, well, you know what? This is better than uh, the bracelet at this point. The problem with magic skin is that if you use it once, you're forced to always encounter it again, right? But the thing is, if you have school bag, you can just keep carrying it and then you can't encounter it again. So that's pretty good. I like the idea of everything in here, actually. I want to play this guy first. He pays out with garbage. Okay, that's unfortunate. Gimme, gimme, gimme this. That's all I really care for in here. Let's grab some HP and play that guy a little bit more. Oh, nice. He actually paid out. Oh, and uh, his twin brother came along to have some fun with. I will say, though, like, you're never going to run out of... Obviously, because it's a big metropolitan city, right? You're never going to run out of places to eat in London. You'll, you'll always find places. The tough part is finding places that don't fucking rip you off, basically, for the food. Like, the food was alright, as long as you didn't get any British food. Uh, because British food... Like, to this day, I just don't understand how this happened. How did Britain, for most of its modern, industrialized existence, when they were colonizing places, etc, etc, spend so much time and money and effort trying to colonize all the places in the world that had, you know, Spices. They they went out of their way to collect as many sp as spices and everything possible just to never use any of them to season any of their food. Why is British food so bad? <laughs> I'm pretty sure if you got COVID in the UK, you wouldn't even notice because the food tastes so bland already that it wouldn't taste any different. Now that's a good relic though. A good trinket. That, that blessed penny. Oh yes. Oh yes, of course. But uh, like any other restaurant you go to in the UK is uh, mostly fine. Like... Even if they're all chain restaurants, right? I, I have to admit, Wagamama kind of rules. It's one of the best places you'll find any sort of, like, Asian or Japanese food specifically outside of Japan. Like, it's it's some of the best Japanese food you can eat outside of Japan. It's it's very well prepared. It it tastes hella good. Like, it's, it's good. It's good stuff. Please? Oh my god, bro. He's the trinket guy. I'm not even gonna continue, even with Virgo. I, I, he, he doesn't deserve any more. Bro's just the trinket guy. That's, that's, okay, sure, whatever, I guess I'm fucking off, I guess I'm leaving. There was one restaurant that was crazy that we went to, um, in, on the, on the Thursday, I think. It's, uh, it was also a chain restaurant, I forgot what it was called already, I think it's, it was an Italian restaurant, though. And there was, like, very little traffic. Like, I guess, you know, it, it is a cultural thing. If you're going out for dinner, this was, like, I don't know, 5pm or something, nobody's in the UK is going to restaurants. Like, after work, everybody's going to the pub, right? We didn't go to pubs, because whatever, didn't feel like it or whatever. But it makes sense that that's, how, that that's where people go. But we wanted to like, actually have like a variety of different foods. We didn't just want to have fish and chips for every dinner, right? That I think that's reasonable. 
I think that's very acceptable, very sensible. So, we went to like different types of restaurants. This restaurant, there was not a lot going on. Like, it was it was empty because of the time of day or whatever. I don't know when they ever expect to have big traffic in their restaurants, but whatever. The crazy part was... Well, there were two things that happened in a restaurant that I thought were kind of wild. The first one being that the waiter that served us did not have to note down our order. What the hell? What the, I didn't know he, like, kind of aims like that's kind of cool. I didn't know he aims it like that. You know, he put so much zest on it. He did not have to note down our orders with paper, or like on paper at all, because we were the only guests in the restaurant. Well, until like another couple arrived a few minutes after we like started eating. Uh, so he just like remembered everything everybody ordered on the top of his head. We were like three people, so, you know, I mean, that's not crazy to do, but it's just not something you see very often. You know, if you think about it, most of the time, when you, when you see something like that, like, it's, it's not a common occurrence for a waiter to just, like, have all that shit memorized in their head. But bro had it, had it memorized. And, he was an Italian guy working the Italian chain restaurant. Think of it as what you will. Maybe that's why he got the job. Maybe he got, like, drafted, you know? Like, they were doing... They were looking for people to work the restaurant, and they were like, Well, this guy's Italian, so, obviously, he was speaking Italian. But, yeah, you know, it works out pretty well. Makes sense. The other crazy thing was... Other other waiter, the one that, you know, took us in and had us seated, uh, guy from Senegal, according to his own description, he's from Senegal. And he he thought I was French. The why did, why did he think I was French? Because of my haircut. Like I understand why he draws that connection, why he, or much rather why he has the connection to France. It's just kind of curious how um, he basically had absolutely nothing no, nothing to claim his base on whatsoever except the fact that, oh yeah, like your hairstyle looks a little French. And I was like, nah, bro, I'm not French, but cool, I guess. <laughs> Very strange thing to say. I didn't take offense to it or anything, obviously. I, I didn't think it was a big deal. But it was very funny, and I was like, ah, shit, do I have to get a haircut now? Ah, fuck, I look French? Aw, oh, no, man. Aw, oh, no, man. I There's two ways out of this. Either I embrace it, and I gotta learn French, which, uh, that's the hard way. Or, I let it define my entire personality now, uh, because my hatred of the French is stronger than anything else in the world, meaning I have to get a haircut. <laughs> which way it's gonna be is uh, completely up to... The whims of the day. Let's use this Emperor card, why not? I haven't fought this guy in fucking eons. I don't know what the hell you do. But Broken Modem is kind of fucking you over because I guess you're like a segmented enemy with these arms. Like, bro is not doing a thing. <coughs> he was completely frozen in place, man. What the hell? <coughs> God, I'm dying, bro. <coughs> nah, I'm fine, actually. Hmm, an item of mysterious nature. A D1. That's interesting. That's an interesting proposal. No, I don't want the D1. Like, ah, but it's so good on the chest. Fuck no, I gotta carry it because of that. I'm pretty close to that being like a good payoff as well. No, I gotta carry it for that. Secret room right here would be awesome, actually. Huge news. Okay, I get an angel deal, actually. You know what? I think this is a good magic skin use. Vade Retro. Never mind. <laughs> okay, it was not a good magic skin use, but at least I get to also see what this is and, uh, fight for it. Uh, lunch is alright. So yeah, that was, I guess, the second time I've been racially profiled in my life. Um, instead of people thinking I'm Swedish, this time they thought I was French. Uh, and I guess it wasn't even much of a racial profiling, it was profiled because of my haircut. Very, very interesting, very, very curious. I, uh, don't know how I've come to terms with it yet, just yet. Honestly, that sex room doesn't even look too terrible to me right now. But I feel like magic skin will still show up anyway. Oh boy, how much you want to bet this is cursed eye, and I will regret taking it. Anyway, moving on. I really hope that... No, I definitely know that yeeting is gonna cause me to teleport, isn't it? <sighs> now I really want to hit that D6 room, dude. I really want to hit that. But the thing is, it's not even guaranteed to reroll the D6, uh, the, the cursed eye, man. It'd be such a gamble. Fuck it. What's the worst that could happen? I got Godhead, which means I got a cool looking fetus. I also have Monstro's Lung. I have Uranus. I have Piercing Tears. Let me look. I got Sacred Heart. Wait, this was an insane upgrade? Hold on, what the fuck? This was actually an insane reroll. I got a fully charged Eden Soul. 
which I'm not gonna use this floor yet because I have Curse of the Blight. It strikes me as a dumb idea to do it on this floor. Uh, I got the stopwatch from the shop as well. What the hell? Okay, ah, uh, sure. All right, yeah, that was actually the most insane reroll of all time. Holy shit. Oh, my fire rate is terrible though. Oh yeah, because of Monstrous Lawn. Oh wait, he just auto shoots though? That's awesome, okay. Uh, well, Angel Deal, that's cool. Oh yeah, right. No, I've already seen this. Yeah, um, okay, give... You know what, I'm gonna continue the trend. We're going up today. And next floor. Find a secret room, use the Eden Soul in there, uh, and see what you can get yourself. I mean, I, if I get an Angel Deal this floor, I can also use it in there. I guess I'll check if I can get an Angel Deal. Anything's possible. Okay, didn't get an extra deal. That's fine. That's fine. All right, Eden Soul. Don't let me down. We meet again, fateful old friend. All right, fine. I'll use you again. Sure. Thanks for the keys. All right, I guess I'll leave. That's good enough. You know what? I'm, I'm done with this. I'm leaving. I spent like nine minutes on the first floor. I gotta speed up the rest of the run, man. Gotta pick up the pace a little bit towards the tail end, you know? That's kind of what you gotta do. Anyway, let's talk about media a little bit as well. By media, I mean Mango. I read a Mango recently. Yes, I'm saying it like that on purpose because I know somebody will get upset. Uh, because whenever I travel, you gotta pass time somehow, right? Well, you gotta pass time when you're on a plane or on a train for a while or something like that. So I've gotten into the habit over the recent year, basically, just a recent year. I mean, I only got re really into reading manga last year anyway. All of the mangas bar one that I've read are not finished yet. They're still ongoing, so obviously as they get updated, I read them as well. One of them that has just joined those ranks is Land of the Lustrous. I, I read through that on my, my trip and I finished reading it at home yesterday. And it's fucking awesome. It rules, man. It's a good-ass story. Uh, I mean, what's it about? I don't know. Read the, the reader's digest yourself. I can give you my, my interpret- or like my understanding of it. I don't- does anybody else have this? Like, I don't- I'm not a huge fan necessarily sometimes of talking about stuff that I enjoy in terms of like media, like, like, like stories. Because I feel like I'm always a bit pretentious when I talk about it. Or I always just feel a bit pretentious when talking about it. I don't know why, it's just kind of how I feel about it. Like, oh, this is like a deep story. And as soon as I go into like analyzing or, you know, in internalizing a story and finding like themes and stuff like that or talking about it with somebody I always feel like a little pretentious anyway it's like it's like a cool story about that deals like with you know a human nature and it's got like a bunch of like Buddhist themes and stuff and uh, it's it's really cool I liked it a lot it was very nice I mean it's the manga is almost finished to be fair like the main story is basically over there's like one last arc now that's going on there's probably only gonna be like four more chapters or something like that before it's completely finished, so I guess I picked it up at the right time. Apparently it was on a long, like almost two year long hiatus uh, until last year or something like that before I picked it up. So yeah, I've also got into the habit apparently of getting into these mangas whenever they were on hiatus for a while and come back after being on hiatus. The same thing happened with Berserk. I started reading it, you know, after it came back from hiatus because, you know, Mura passed. There's this, uh, I feel like there's a pattern here with the stuff I choose to read. So basically, as so y anybody who's a fan of Vagabond, which is on my list, you can rejoice as soon as I start reading that, it'll probably <laughs> continue and we'll stop being on hiatus. I guarantee it, okay? The, the week I decide to read that, uh, the author is going to decide to make a new chapter. I guarantee it. That's, that's, that's how it's going to happen. It's gonna... That's, that's how it's gonna be. It does make me feel a little bit weird, to be fair. To be like, you know, the, the guy that's sitting on a plane, you know, in the middle of the row as well, or whatever. As a fucking... Like, just looking at his phone reading manga. You know, it, it makes me feel a little bit strange. But honestly, you get over it, right? Like, you, you still need to have some self-awareness to operate in the world. But being able to overcome that self-awareness or the crippling self-awareness that makes you anxious about what, oh, what, what do other people think of me? I don't care what the other two dudes I was sitting next to on the plane thought of me reading Land of the Lustrous. I don't care if they took a peek at my phone and said, what the hell is this guy reading? What the, what, what is this, what is this look? What, what the hell is he looking at here? Right? I'll never see those guys again in my life. I don't know who they are. I don't know what their plans were, for, like, for the flights. I don't care, right? Who gives a shit? I'm mostly telling that to myself to an extent as well, but it is a funny thought, like, sometimes it creeps into my head, I'm like, Oh, well, yeah, this guy's like, oh, he's probably looking at, like, he, he catches, like, a glimpse in the corner of his eye sometimes of me looking at this shit on my phone, he's like, what the fuck is this guy looking at? And then, like, you, like, this wasn't the, the case for this manga necessarily, 
But sometimes, you know, there might be an illustration or a panel that could be a little sus or a little saucy or something like that. Not necessarily because you're actually reading anything of that nature. Again, this story doesn't have any of that in it. But it, at a glance, it could look that way or something like that. You never know, right? That's just the, the nature of the medium. But, you know, and then you're like, oh, what if uh, somebody sees this and... Uh, what's this guy gonna think of me when he sees this? You know, like... I've, to be fair, I've read way worse stuff in public. On that Hamburg trip that I talked about last video, I read fucking Fire Punch. For all, like, for all that long train ride, like those fucking eight hours I spent on that train back home because it was delayed so much. And I was stuck on it for so long. Yeah, I finished all the Fire Punch in that, man. That was a good read, but also... <laughs> There's some way worse panels than that one, man. I'm just, that's all I'm saying, man. Oh, that's nice. That's a nice little addition. Am I even gonna fight Blue Baby? Nah, bro. Raw dog send it into fucking... Mega Satan straight away. What a horrible sentence, by the way. Why did I say it like that? God damn, where the fuck is the starting? It's over this way, right? It must be, because this is where items are. Fuck it, let's go. I just want to end this. I want to get this over with. Look at the damage, brother. Keeping Gello out and about for this one is certainly the, the certainly the choice of the day, man. Not going for the Yeet build this late now? Yeah, this is working so much better. Look at that, bro. But yeah, it's the same reason... Okay, like, this is... This is a prison of my own creation. But, uh, uh, like, about a year or two ago, I decided, like, hey, Twitter is going to so much shit. I'm tired of seeing, like, people discussing shit I don't care about. I'm tired of seeing, like, arguments and shit like that. So I just started following, like, a bunch of artists, right? On Twitter. Like, so my, my entire Twitter feed nowadays is just memes, occasionally retweeted by my friends, and artists. And a lot of these artists are, like, Asian. They're East Asian, Japanese, Korean. Chinese, you know, they tweet in a bunch of shit that's like Japanese as well sometimes. They could be saying the vilest shit, I, I don't know what they're saying, because I can't read the weeb rules. But sometimes they retweet some saucy stuff, and I'm like, I don't mind seeing this, but I also can't browse Twitter in public anymore, because what if, right? Do I do the void today? Nah. <laughs> nah. So basically, kids, the lesson is, if you're gonna follow a bunch of artists on Twitter, make sure you vet their retweets. AKA, uh, if you ever see something saucy pop up, you know, you gotta be careful. You gotta be careful. Even if you like the artist's art themselves, uh, there may very well be sometimes where they retweet something, yeah, something you might not want people to catch a glimpse of in public. Anyway, I'm I'm done for today. I hope you've had an enjoyable time. I certainly did, and I will catch you again tomorrow. Have a good one. Bye bye.